You may remember that we started looking at the whole idea of limits by asking the question of what happens to a function at some x value where something strange occurs in the function. And of course quite often that something strange is going to be a discontinuity. So what we want to do is we want to see what kind of discontinuities can occur and how to use limits in order to detect them. Now what you see in front of you are the three most common types of discontinuity, the one that we're going to be looking most often. Namely, on the left hand side, you have what we normally call an asymptote. So it's a vertical line that the curve approaches. In the middle, we have, well, what exactly do we have in the middle? It's not even clear that there is a discontinuity. And that's because it's a very tiny thing called a single point hold. There's just one point missing. On the right hand side, on the other hand, we have what I would call a jump. So the function all of a sudden jumps from one a position to another one. It doesn't have to be uh, um, from one constant to another constant. Uh, this is just an example I'm giving you. It can jump from any section of the curve to another section of the curve. Just at one point it will jump from one to the other. Now if you look at these three graphs you can see that they're quite different visually and what we want to do is we want to see how we can use limits in order to detect and identify what kind of discontinuity we have. Now, for continuity, what needs to happen is that we need to have a graph, a nice graph, and in order for the function to be continuous, say, at that particular place, at the particular value of c, what we want is that the limit as x approaches c from the left, which means as we're approaching that value from the left, and the limit as x approaches c from the right, so as we're coming from the other side, they both have to exist and they must equal the value of the function at that point. That's the definition of continuity. So, in order for a discontinuity to occur, what happens is that something must go wrong. Yes, exactly, something must go wrong like in the spelling of that word. So, when something goes wrong with that formula we have up there, which is the formula for continuity, then we're going to have a discontinuity. And depending on what goes wrong, we can identify what kind of discontinuity. So, what goes wrong determines the type of the discontinuity. Let's see how we go about that. The first case we're going to see is actually an extreme case, but it's a fairly common one. Um, not particularly interesting, uh, but it gives rise to a, another little detail having to do with continuity. So the out of domain or end of domain situation happens when the discontinuity is related to, of course, the domain of the function. So let's say that we have this function. By the way, if you want to know where that function comes from, it's the function square root of x squared minus 1. And of course, its domain does not contain the numbers between negative 1 and 1 because for them, we end up having to compute the square root of a negative number, which we cannot do. Okay? But don't worry about the formula too much. Uh, let's just focus on the graph. Okay? So in this situation, what goes wrong is with the function itself. So if we pick a c, which is outside of the domain of the function, so if we pick a c in this interval where there is nothing, where there is no graph, where the function cannot be evaluated, well, of course, the middle part of the definition cannot be satisfied. It doesn't, the f of c cannot be computed. And so what we have is a situation of being out of the domain. As I said, this is not particularly interesting as far as continuity is concerned. If we don't have a function, we're not really really interested in whether the function is continuous or not. A little bit more interesting is the case where we are at the end of the domain. Okay? So in this situation what happens is that we cannot approach the function from the right hand side in this particular case and therefore the problem is with the limit as x approaches c from the right. That one does not exist. However the other limit may very well exist. So in this case we say that we are dealing with an end of domain. Uh, problem. So in this case the, the value c is the place where the domain ends and the part outside of the domain, domain begins. In fact if the function does have a value at that particular uh, x value of c, um, so let's say f of c exists, then that left hand side equation is all good. And so we have you know almost continuity. Well what we do is we call this thing left continuity, this kind of condition. Uh, and this is the technical uh, detail of interest that I was mentioning earlier. Of course, we can do exactly the same thing on the other side. If c is in that position so that we cannot compute the left limit, then of course that is where the problem is. But everything else might be okay, including the function having a value at c. 
If that happens, then everything is okay with the function from the right hand side. And so we're going to say that this function is going to be right continuous. As I said, not a big deal in terms of uh, uh, continuity itself. These are uh, situations that can be looked at and identified just from looking at the domain of the function. But still, this idea of left continuity and right continuity are uh, things that are occasionally used. Now let's look at the vertical asymptote situation. Well, we've seen that before. Okay, so remember that in order to have a vertical asymptote, what we need is either the function is going up to infinity from the left hand side. So either the limit as x approaches c from the left of f of x is infinite, or maybe the limit is negative infinity. Okay, so the function is going down to negative infinity. So that same limit is going to negative infinity. Or of course, we could have that asymptote on the other side. So we could have an asymptote because as the function approaches that uh, value of c from the right hand side, the limit approaches infinity or it approaches negative infinity from the other side. Okay. Uh, so any one of these cases can happen. So whenever we're dealing with an infinite limit, we know right away there is a vertical asymptote. Remember, all of this uh, has nothing to do with the function uh, crossing or not crossing because, for instance, the function could go like this or could go like that and have even a point uh, on the graph. So in all of those situations, we still talk about a vertical asymptote. In conclusion, a vertical asymptote is completely identified by the presence of an infinite limit at a finite value. How about single point holes? Well, those are difficult to see, but easy to detect. What happens here is that as you're approaching from the left, the function is in fact approaching something. And as you're approaching from the right, the function is approaching something. And in fact, those two somethings end up being the same. So in other words, the function is approaching the same value, whether we're uh, approaching the value of c from the left or from the right. Okay, so in that situation, the only thing which is missing is the single point. So the problem has to be with the function itself. So the problem is that we cannot compute the functions. If we try to compute the function at that particular value, we end up with it does not exist. So in order to identify a single point hole, what we need is a value c for which the function does not exist, but such that if we approach it from the left or from the right, we end up with a value. In fact, we end up with the same value. Let's now look at the jump. So what is a jump? A jump is a situation where the function all of a sudden goes from one position to another one without gradually, continuously moving from one to the other. So what happens in this situation is that we do have a left limit. The function is going for somewhere from the left. And we also have a right limit as the variable is approaching our uh, value c from the right hand side. The problem is that those two values are not the same. The function may even be defined. There may be an f of c either at the top or the bottom or even somewhere else. Okay? But the point is that we want the limit from the left and the limit from the right to be unequal. When that happens, then we end up with a jump, regardless of what's going on at the value itself. There are other types of discontinuity and we're not going to spend a lot of time with them. So I'm just going to mention them to you just so that uh, you know that they exist. Uh, a fairly typical one is one which you're going to find in a lot of calculus books, uh, but it's really more of a pathological kind of situation, a made up situation that does not occur in any of the applied problems or in any of the functions that we'll be studying. And that's a situation where we basically have a single point hole. I don't know if you can see it, but let's say it's there. But the, what happens is that the function is defined, but it's defined somewhere else. This is called a displaced point. And I'll leave it to you to convince yourself that in this situation, the limit as x approaches c exists, the function exists, but the two are not the same. Okay? I'm not even going to write it down because, again, it's something that we're not going to use very frequently, but your textbook might have it. And some jocular instructor may ask you some questions about it, okay? but we're not going to spend a lot of time on that. Another kind of situation which is more interesting, which can come out of some of the functions that we're going to be playing with, is a situation where the function looks like this. So as, the, uh, as we're approaching, say, this value on the left-hand side of 0, the function just keeps going up and down and up and down and up and down and you know, maybe faster and faster and faster, but without really approaching anything in particular. 
this kind of discontinuity does not have a particular name, uh, but is one that mathematicians like to consider. And as I said, it does occur in uh, um, functions in which are even fairly simple to write down. So you may want to be aware of that, aware of the fact that it exists, and ready to pick it up when it occurs. There are lots of other kinds of discontinuities uh, that mathematicians love and they uh, love to spend time analyzing them. But as far as we're concerned, this is it. But make sure that you're just familiar with the three basic types of the vertical asymptote, the single point hole and the jump, and maybe the domain issue, and uh, that will be enough for our purposes.